Okay, so today we're going to be having a quick look at some of the new uh, Autodesk Construction Cloud features that have recently been released. Okay, so the first item we're going to look at is um, Accounts Admin Level, and it is to do with our Members View. So within here, they've now added the ability to um, filter this list in some way. Um, if you need to sort of review who has access, who we've got, we can start to filter that down by company, by their current status, um, their default role and their access level. This is going to help you get around that information a little bit more quickly, uh, understand who's got access to our account. Uh, the other item within the account area is um, within the library function. So the library being um, our sort of centralized collection of contents, of form templates, etc. So um, <clears throat> we now have the ability to uh, archive sheets that we no longer need. So we can click archive, that we remove from any projects. Um, you can see its status here instead of saying added to the number of projects, it's going to uh, flip to archived. But we can reinstate that, so we can just click on restore if we need to bring that back um, into our live projects. So restoring it adds it back in to any of the projects it previously was included in. Um, and also when we do when you do do that um, action of archiving it also archives it with any project within any of the projects that's had access to it. So within docs we have some new options around the configuration of uh, reviews. Within reviews, if we just go to the settings and the, the setup area, you now have this concept of uh, draft approval workflows. So as we are creating um, new ones, as we set them up, we can opt to potentially not complete them, um, just leave them as draft. So we've got save as draft up here. If we do that, it's going to be saved. You can finalize it later. It's not going to be available to anyone to, to use until we finalize it, which we can do here uh, when we're ready or after we've edited uh, its contents. So also within reviews, um, we've got the ability now to export uh, a log of them. So export all. By default, it's going to create us a, an XLS summary. Uh, you just hit report, create report, and that's going to uh, email with a link to download that file and once we've got that we can see um, some details about when it was created who's created it the total numbers open and closed etc and then on the details tab we can see all the current statuses the names the workflow that it's a, a part of who's initiate them who's currently um, due to take the next step with them their current status in regards to uh, whether they're overdue, files within them, and then the approved and rejected statuses related to those. Back within the files area, we've also now got the ability to search and filter documents based on the review status that's been assigned to them as part of one of those review workflows. So for example, if I were to search here for approved at project files level, I can come through here, search through all my subfolders and should hopefully return every file that currently has a status of approved. So we've got three files here. If I just scroll across, we can see their current review status and highlight it as where it's picked up that um, that status from. So obviously whatever that text reads, we'd be able to search for, for that information as well now. So the last feature we're going to look at within um, Docs is around markups and how they're handled. So if I find myself drawing with some markups on, I'll uh, show you what we can now do. So if we open it up, so you can potentially have lots of markups starting to appear uh, on the same plans. So we've now got on the left here the ability to start um, controlling what is and isn't visible here. So you can by just turn them all off, so hide them all. If you just want to be actually able to see the plan. 
or alternatively you can start to use these filter tools so we can flip between uh, just published or pu uh, personal markups we can control um, which markups we see based on who's created them um, by the date range that they were created by the different types so if we just wanted for example to only show arrows you can see we have one here uh, you can control them based on what they're linked to so for example uh, we can see just one that's created and linked to submittals and RFIs now and finally you can control perhaps just by color so if you've got different people using different colors or for different purposes that's a quick way just to filter those off as well so the next item we're going to look at is uh, actually within build and it's some new functionality within the way we can um, display and report against issues we've now got the ability to uh, control some additional um, filter settings around locations so within here we can now um, for example select multiple locations at once and you can see as I click those it's going to bring those in um, alternatively I have to undo those we can also select uh, a parent location and now have the option to also include any of its sub locations as well that's probably going to make it a lot easier to, to filter down to the information that you, you want to see on your project we've also got some additional um, reporting capabilities from forms so within forms we can now run a detailed form report and specifically it's going to um, also include all the references so references to assets, documents, forms, details, issues and photographs. So for example, if I were to select um, a health and safety checklist or form that I've completed here, I can export that and I can now customize which of that, which of those pieces of information is also going to include. Um, obviously, you can click generate, run that, and then it's going to look a little bit like this. So we can see the description, the information, when it was completed, etc., line by line. And here, where we've got one of those items that we've ticked, it's going to reference that. It's going to be a hyperlink back to um, the web, so I can go straight to that issue. I can see the photographs related to it. And once you've completed the form, where you've referenced anything else, any other items, they're also going to be detailed as well. So down here, it's referencing, because of the health and safety checklist, um, some items, some assets that we've inspected, so scaffold tiles and excavators and the like and also um, some documentation that we've referenced there. The next uh, item we're going to look at within build is around RFIs and this is a really really useful um, new feature so it's the ability for someone who isn't a member of our project to be sent an RFI and they can just reply to the email that's all they have to do um, so they don't have to be part of your project they don't need to be taking up a license they're an external party that need to comment on this we can include them and just replying to the email is going to update our um, RFI for us. So to do this, when we create a new RFI, we just need to, uh, rather than selecting a member of our project, we now get this option of assign to email. You can type in a third party's email address, someone who isn't part of the project, click add, and they'll temporarily be added as a reviewer for this RFI. Um, if we send that off, they'll get an email like this, which as you can see here, we can respond directly to the email. So I can create my reply here. Um, Click send. And that's actually going to update our RFI in the system. So even though I don't actually have an, a, a license, even though I'm not actually a member of this project, I was able to respond to that. And we can hopefully see that here. So it's currently now answered. So there's my official response. Here's my answer. And then the manager will be able to review that and uh, either return it to the reviewer or close and distribute. So obviously that's going to be really useful. Um, there's probably a lot of situations where 
it's going to be helpful to be able to interact with people outside of uh, the actual project. The next thing we're going to look at is uh, an item within submittals. So this new functionality is going to allow us to um, apply, basically apply stamps to the information that we're reviewing. So as a reviewer, you've now got this ability up here to create a stamp. Uh, we can include in that our response. So for example, I'm going to approve this. And by default, it's going to show us who's carried out that review, the date it's done, and my company name. You can configure the colors there if you need to. And when we're happy, we can create our stamp, which we can then drop onto the documentation that we've been asked to look at as part of the submittal. And it's going to bake that markup into that PDF. So once that's created, I'm going to just drag that round, resize it if I need to. And when I'm happy, I can click on the save and close. And it's going to create a copy of this file with my annotations, which is also date and time stamped there as well. And obviously that's now going to form part of our um, official response when we submit it back. Also within submittals, um, there's been some update to the reporting. When we report, we can now do um, a more detailed report, the item detail report to PDF. And when we run that, it's also going to include our references. So for example, here uh, I've run one on all of our current items here. And we get this grid of information at the bottom here, which shows us who it's currently with, any official responses, and links off to these files and attachments and references that form part of it. And the final thing that we're going to look at today is probably the, the biggest and most important step forward for this and it's around um, access on mobile devices. So within the plan grid build app, um, currently only on iOS, but shortly being developed for the Android as well, um, we can now from the files area, not only access the for the field, but we've got access to project files, which we obviously didn't previously have. This is gonna be in line with whatever your permissions are in the web base, that's gonna all line up, but now you've got access to both of those sections. If we can select which areas we particularly want to download the information for. So for example, if I only want published information, I click three dots there, I can set it to automatically download just those. Obviously I could do that against the project files or whatever sets of information I want. And when we have those set up, you can see that, that green tick appears next to the um, folders that we're currently syncing. So obviously that's going to be uh, really useful and it's going to do away with the need to move certain files into the for the field area uh, and it's going to give everyone access to, to the information they already had access to uh, from the office uh, on their iPads now on site. So that concludes our uh, update on the latest new features. Hopefully you found them useful.